Oh man, I need to work on my beach body before summer starts. According to my research, if you consume green tea extract, your body will eat away at fat more efficiently. Is that just me or does that not make any sense? It does too make sense, and lucky for you. I have green tea in my backpack. I don't feel any different. Miss Frizzle, do you think this actually works? This sounds like it needs some investigating. Everyone, do the rest. Except you, of course, Tim. We will be observing how the green tea interacts with your normal beta oxidation. I knew I should have stayed home today. Whoa, is that a mitochondrion? Excellent observation, Dorothy Ann. We'll be heading over there shortly, but first, let's find a triglyceride to hang on to in the adipose tissue. Whoa, is that a triglyceride? Yes, it is, Arnold. Great eye. Let's go. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, I think I'm going to be sick. Now we just have to wait for a hormone to come along to initiate the activation process. Look, Miss Frizzle. Adrenaline. It activated a dimlial cyclase. And now look, ATP is being hydrolyzed into cyclic AMP. Looks like it activated the cyclic AMP dependent kinase. And now the triacylglycerol lipase is activated. Whoa, Miss Frizzle, what's happening? An excellent question, Arnold. We are experiencing what we just witnessed. The triacylglycerol lipase has the job of hydrolyzing fatty acids from the first or third carbon of a triethylglycerol. Since we were sitting on carbon-3, we are now free from the glycerol. We're now being transported into the blood by serum albumin. I wonder what Tim's doing. Look, it's the mitochondrion again. Are we going into it, Miss Frizzle? Since we made friends with a shorter facet, fatty acid chain, yes, we're going straight to the mitochondrial matrix. If we were on a longer chain, we would stop at the mitochondrial membrane to be shortened first. According to my research, we should be turning into a fatty acyl-CoA thioester after acyl-CoA dehydrogenase combines the fatty acid we're on with acetyl-CoA. Right you are, Dorothy Ann. Here we go. Miss Frizzle, why is that acyl-CoA dehydrogenase coming towards us? It's turning us into trans-delta squared enol-CoA, and an FADH2 was also made. Whoa, we're moving again! What's happening now? With the help of enol-CoA hydratase, the trans-delta squared enol-CoA is being hydrated into L-beta hydroxyacyl-CoA. Hey, look! NADH is being reduced right behind us. It looks like hydroxyacyl-CoA dehydrogenase is coupling the NADH reduction to oxidize us into beta-ketoacyl-CoA. Incoming! There's a thiolase coming right at us! We're being cleaved! I think I'm going to be sick. Excellent observations, class. Here we are in the final reaction of beta oxidation. The shortened fatty acyl CoA is going back through beta oxidation. Because we were on one of the two carbons that were cleaved from the beta keto acyl CoA, we have become acetyl CoA. Now, where do you suppose we're going? Somewhere to finish being processed? Pretty much anywhere. Yes, now the acetyl CoA can go to any number of other me metabolic processes like these. Miss Frizzle, I think we're headed to the Krebs cycle. Yes, you're quite right, Arnold. Let's head back to the classroom. Bus, do your stuff. Oh. <laughs> but Miss Frizzle, we never saw the effects of the green tea. According to my research, green tea extracts contain the polyphenol catechins, which act to decrease fatty acid synthesis through the inhibition of fatty acid synthetase. Studies have shown that the continuous consumption of green tea extract improves fat oxidation. It is thought to enhance beta oxidation of fatty acid in the liver. So, the processes we saw today aren't changed in any way. They are just stopped or made to work more efficiently. Great finding, Dorothy Ann. As I always say, take chances, make mistakes, get messy. Beep, beep.